Hello, everyone. Anyone? Uh, hopefully, a few people here are going to join us. <clears throat> it's a little bit of a last minute thing. Um, I'm Greg Swartz, uh, the director of the Water of Life, freshly returned from Scotland um, and Germany. It was a, a three week sort of a whiskey jaunt around Europe, which was great. Um, we did a lot of whiskey events, six of them in nine days throughout Germany with our good friend Udo Sontag. And then uh, I went over to Scotland, spent a few days in Glasgow, catching up with some old friends. And then uh, I was off to Isla, where I, my wife met me and we hung out at the festival for part of it. But unfortunately, we're not there anymore. And that means we're missing Bunahaven Day. Um, we did go to Bunahaven. And um, I really, really bummed that we couldn't make it to stay any longer than we did. But we just, uh, we'd I've been away from the kids for three weeks and we had a lot of stuff going on. Our kids were doing things. So headed back also in time for our film to start streaming on PBS. And that's going to continue uh, throughout the month on the PBS app. If you're in the US, you can see the film now. And a number of the PBS stations, most of the PBS stations around the country are actually going to be airing the film at different points throughout the month of June. Um, if you go to our website, you'll be able to uh, find the the actual times in the uh, um, local listings is basically what I'm really struggling to say here. It'll <laughs> um, tell you exactly where it's going to air in your local PBS station. And we've got some really great air times. A lot of them are um, uh, uh, prime time, uh, really good nights. And I'm going to actually post a thing here in the link, uh, sorry, in the uh, chat. Um, and if you see this and you want to be able to see where it's going to air near you, then you'll be able to do it. Here it comes. And whoops, and maybe that didn't work. Well, in any case, uh, I would love to know what any of you might be drinking while I'm doing this, uh, because I have poured myself a dram of the Buna Haven, but I haven't started drinking it yet. Um, and here we go. There's the link to the app. I put it in the chat. I'm also going to put it up on the screen here. Um, it will, this should, if you're in the US, uh, this should automatically take you to um, the PBS station nearest you, and it will tell you where the film is airing. Um, the mine worked even when I was in Scotland. This won't work if you're not in the US, um, but we are, once the PBS month is over, which I believe ends on July 6th, because July 4th is a holiday here, so at the end of the holiday weekend, then uh, shortly after that, we'll start rolling out on another number of other platforms, um, ones that, you know, uh, the ones you're familiar with, the streaming platforms and stuff. Um, and uh, I, I also, my, my dram has been poured and is underneath the coin that I was given when I finally got to meet Snoop at the masterclass, which I have to say, the most exciting thing that happened to me over the past week wasn't the great whiskey, although that was awesome. And it wasn't the great events. They were amazing. It was so cool to so, meet so many people who I'd met so many times online, but had never met in person. And everywhere we went, people were coming up to me and talking about the movie and they saw the movie. And because I do things like this, they recognize my face, I guess, um, which was so much fun. Um, I got to meet so many people and half of whom I never even got their names. We just talked about the movie for a little bit. Um, I see our friend James DiGiulio is drinking at Lock and Doll, the Derek and Fiona. I had that actually at their restaurant. Um, it was amazing. Um, and uh, Buna Ten from Kintra Farm on Isla. Uh, it's good to see you too. And uh, so, yeah, here having a sample of Glen Canadian single malt. Oh, that's, the, is, I believe, um, that's the one that aren't, aren't they having to change their name? Um, that they're the ones in the in the dispute with the uh, um, Scotch Wal Scotch Whiskey Association, but in either case, um, I'm going to put the put the link back up here. There we go. Um, yep, there we go. So I know we've been asked a lot of questions by a lot of people about you know what the um, uh, where the film is and how this works with PBS. Like PBS stations are independent stations and they do their own programming. Wait a second. I'm going to take a moment. So here is to Buna Haven. Here's to the Fashil. Here's to all of you. Happy Friday. Slant mm. I love Buna Haven. <laughs> it's funny. Um, 
I'll get back to the PBS thing in a moment. Uh, but if you've if you've been to, I love Bunahaven, and uh, the location of it on the island is just absolutely stunning. And if you haven't been there, I highly recommend going there because as much as I love the whiskeys they released, the pl- it's so much of the place that when you're there, it, it just all kind of comes together in a different way. And this is just this is the Bunahaven 12 year old, standard official bottling. I have yet to decide if I'm going to open this today. I've had this for a couple of years now and I haven't opened it yet, but this is the 2018 festival bottling. Um, but uh, for right now, I'm sticking with the OB. So back to the PBS thing. PBS stations are all independent stations that collectively make up the network and they all do their own programming. And therefore, each of them can show the films and the programming that they do at times of their choosing. So that's why I would encourage you to check this out. It should automatically take you, if you're in the US, to your local PBS station. If it doesn't, you can actually create a free account and find it, and it should be streaming to you. Um, and if you have any questions, please, you can write to me here. You can write to us. Um, I'm getting, oh, wow, this is great. Hello from Brooklyn. Hello. Um, if I got a chance to watch you, I seriously enjoyed it. Well, thank you. Um, uh, yeah, <laughs> um, this isn't the Bunahaven cast strength, but this is, what is this? 46.3, um, which is pretty killer. So, but speaking of great Bunahavens and great friends, but this is one I've known for a little while. Um, I'm going to actually have a friend join me for a couple minutes. So I'm not just talking to a camera. Um, I'm going to have Mr. Udo Sontag pop in and say hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Um, thanks for popping in. Yeah. Um, do you have a Bunahaven? Uh, <clears throat> I have to admit that uh, I don't have any drama at all, but uh, I'll get me one. <laughs> um, I'll have two for you. Gorgeous. Um, uh, Donner Pass Whiskey. Saw the film a couple days ago. Love the film. Thank you so much. That's awesome. Um, Keith Duncan has just, uh, oh, he loves me a bit of Udo. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, yes, the film is, is, I mean, it's, it's all over the country and it's crazy. And I, I just literally moments before I went live today, I got another update from our stations rep that now St. Louis has programmed us. So we, it, it takes us a little while to get them added to our, um, database, but we'll get them all up there. And so you'll, you'll be able to find them all if you do. And, um, Whiskey Jason says hi, Udo. I don't know who Whiskey Jason is. Uh, okay. <laughs> Whiskey Jason is, is really a, a great podcaster here in Germany. He's oh, awesome. one of the most famous one. Well, hello, hello, Jason. How are you? Hello, Whiskey Jason. Then either way, hello. <laughs> um, okay. The the chats are awesome. I mean, I I just did this today as a little bit of a um last minute thing because I we've gotten so many questions about how PBS works and where people can see it. I just figured this would be the best way for me to answer questions and drink a dram at one o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> what do you have in your class? Uh, it's a Bunahaven 12. Bunahaven 12. Well, let me get just a second and I'll join you. Hold on a second. Um, uh, WQED in Pittsburgh, I believe we're listed on P- on WQED. I, I know we're on the app. We're on the app everywhere. Uh, I don't know about the broadcast yet, and I don't want to make everyone um, waste time on me uh, looking for it. But, but if you go to the to that, you can also go um, to our. Hold on one second. I'm going to post another link here. This will take you to our site, where we have a constantly updated schedule of our own. And like I said, that cha- it gets updated literally constantly. Um, there we go. I put that in the chat. And I'm going to put it here as well. There we go. So, yes, wateroflifefilm.com slash PBS dash broadcast dash schedule slash. That will take you to the broadcast schedule as it currently stands. Wow. Um, I think I got to start doing these again, Udo. What do you think on a regular basis? Sorry, I didn't get you. 
I said, I, th I, said I think I'm going to start doing these live things every week again. Uh, I, I miss doing it. Me too. Me too. I, I kept on listening to you uh, doing stuff like that because uh, I love listening to what you say. <laughs> and and you got exclusive access to me for nine days, right? Yeah, that was a that was a tough time, uh, I have to admit, but uh, it was a, a a brilliant time. I mean, we, we've been throughout to Germany and uh, spreading the movie and uh, tastings with drums in it, uh, actually presenting the drink track, not the soundtrack, but the drink track <laughs> to the movie. And that was uh, pretty much a unique experience. And I saw uh, many people um, looking at the screen with open mouth and open eyes. And afterwards, uh, they got their, their drums uh, due to the film to it. That was a great experience. It really was. I mean, it always is. It's so much fun watching, exp experiencing the film with people. It's so much better than, you know. Um, uh, yeah, but, you know, um, the other thing I wanted to share is, so I went to Bunahaven three days ago. I was there. Um, Lucky you. And I got to go to the new visitor center, which has the most incredible view. Uh, I, I got to be honest with you. It's a little small considering it's brand new. It's right on the water and it's, it's, it's really, really small. But the view is amazing. And I posted a picture of that. But I also got I also got this while I was there, because um, they're selling remote. You could do the tasting kit for this year's festival bottlings. So I mm -hmm. bought this, and I was going to drink it today, but then I realized it's one o'clock here, and I have a whole day ahead of me. And this is going to be four cast strength drams. So I decided to hold off on doing this today. <laughs> um, but I did taste them while I was there, and I got to say, Buna Haven does some amazing stuff with fun cask finishes, and I think that they're they know their spirit really well. Like the stuff they do really suits, like it. some of the stuff they do may not suit another whiskey very well, you know? Uh, the Amontillado, like sometimes those can be a bit too much, I think, but it works because the, the Bunahaven can hold up to it, you know? I'm trying to open this right now. <laughs> what I do love at Bunahaven is uh, they do an outstanding kind of, 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 of whiskey, but they're doing it without... Um, shouting it out too loud mm -hmm. so uh, i think buna haven is one of the probably most underestimated whiskeys in isla uh, at all and uh, what they bring in the in the glass that is really really outstanding i mean you have the the core range with a 12 for uh, for instance which is a multi-layered whiskey uh, that makes really fun on the tongue and uh, when, when you have it in the glass, uh, you won't be disappointed at all. No matter what kind of mood you have, what, no matter what kind of, of uh, weather you have, that's really a great thing. And uh, when you go deeper in it, and when you uh, have the luck to, to get access to their, the, the whiskies that are produced on site, and they are matured on site, and they are sold just on site. Uh, you will get a, a completely uh, different uh, and, and deeper close to it. Yeah. And that is um, really something that astonished me very much. Uh, have do love really good, uh, really much. And and, and so, so much. So James to Julio said, "We don't know. We know nothing about the people at Bunahaven. Well, Bunahaven is." Part of the Distel Group, which is three three distilleries, which is Bunahaven, Deanston, and Tobermory mm -hmm. slash Lecheg. Um, and Bunahaven is the only Isla one. And uh, Bunahaven is their their core range is unpeated, but they do peated whiskeys as well. Um, and it's like Udo said, it's it's really an often overlooked distillery. That's it's kind of hard to get to. It's you're not going to see it unless you're looking for it. <laughs> it's not that it's small; it's just off the road. And and you know, um, and I think they're making a lot of noise a little bit right now in the U.S. I think they're they're doing a lot of new releases, um, core range release that's Sturotter, and there's another one I can't remember the name of it. Um, yeah, Christopher Malloy said Bunahaven 18 may be the best reasonable unpeated malt being bottled today um yeah it's a great whiskey and the prices aren't crazy and um the uh so i highly recommend it if you can come across it I, I, hamish malcolm says greetings from sunny inverness 
And Udo was in Inverness two days ago. Yeah, uh, just a couple of days I've been to Inverness, at least to the airport. Uh, so many <laughs> Inverness. Greetings from the Inverness airport. <laughs> Very impressive uh, when you fly over the over the hills into Inverness and coming down. That's really a great experience. I've never been to the Inverness airport. I've been to Inverness, but not the airport. You should. You should. You come o over the highlands with a plane and you see this, this, the, these mountains without any any people on it, any any footpath, any any car parks, any roads on it, and then you fly it down into it. Oh, that's amazing. That's <laughs> really amazing. Uh, yeah, so um, I, I, it's great to see everyone, and I'm so glad people are tuning in and, and watching us. But if if, um, if if anyone has any questions about the PBS thing and want, us, want some help, please let me know. Um, I'm just going to keep driving that point home because I keep every morning I wake up and I have five or six messages with questions about it and I want to answer them. I do as fast as I can. Um, but, uh, you know, I, so today is the second to last day of the, of the Feshiel. Tomorrow is art bag day. And, uh, I have an art bag ready to go for tomorrow. <laughs> um, I didn't, I met, I did not get to go. I, I went to every distillery while I was on Isla just now. I went to everyone, but, uh, not for their open days. I couldn't do all of them. I missed Kilhomans, I missed Bamores, and I missed, uh, well, Boonhaven and Ardbeg, and also um, Ardenhoe. But I went to them. Um, and uh, so, and I, it was really cool. I, I, I particularly like going to the distilleries when it's not their open days a lot of times because there's some energy to them, but they're not crazy crowded. And although I have to say this year, going to the crowded ones was fun because people kept coming up and, and talking to me about the movie, which was kind of cool. And, you know, it was not something I'm used to. <laughs> and uh, so Christopher Malloy says, uh, might you consider a film on the renaissance of whiskey making in the U.S.? I would absolutely consider that. Um, we're, we're currently making a second film that goes with this film about independent bottling. But we're also working on a number of other things that are little bits here and there uh, related to whiskey in one way or another that have led us down different paths. But we've been approached a couple times about doing a film about bourbon or just about American whiskey in general. American single malts now official category as of a few months ago. Um, and one of the interesting things is I saw when as soon as the American single malt became an official category, there were rumors because of some URL they bought that Jack Daniels was going to make a single malt. And people were like, ah, blah, blah, blah. But 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 Matt Hoffman from Westland said, no, that's a great thing. Don't, I mean, that's legitimacy. You know, that's literally if the biggest and littlest distilleries are all saying we're going to make this, that's, you know, that's the real deal. <laughs> if I can steal a line from from our current film. <laughs> um, uh, independent bottlers are so difficult to track down. I mean, they're difficult to track down anyway. That's they're usually such small releases. Uh, I saw that. You know, most people probably know this, but Gordon and McPhail now has a uh, online store in the U.S. I bought a bottle from it just to try it out. I bought a Scapa from them, uh, but uh, always want to try out new new avenues to you know the ways to get whiskey. But a lot, yeah, the independent bottlers are are challenging until you get, kind of get into their bloodstream and know who carries what and when and where. And um, I'm a huge fan of independent bottlers. I actually have an independent, I have a Gordon and McPhail Bunahaven, but I don't have it on me right now. Um, I don't well, <clears throat> Independent bottlers, uh, they do have uh, a huge ability. They create once in a lifetime moments. Mm -hmm. Because when the bottlers, what they are doing, they're doing release uh, single cask uh, bottlings. So that means there are only let's say 300 400 bottles in the world at all and what once you have that one bottle of them you're in an elite group of of, of let's say 300 400 people that can enjoy this specific tram which i have here I, it's not a a uh Bruno Haven, but uh, what i have here <laughs> is one out of uh, just a few uh, bottles throughout the uh, world. And there are only, as far as I know, two bottles in Europe. And 
one of them I do have in my hands here. And that is the single cask nation uh, that was uh, released with uh, the Water of Life movie. And uh, I'm one of two proud owners of these bottles. And, and therefore, I do love single cask uh, bottlings. Never heard of it, Udo. <laughs> I've never heard of this movie you're talking about. Um, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm, uh, I, uh, I'm so happy to have gotten to share those drams with you of that bottle. Um, but Keith Duncan says he's very jealous, Udo. So you, you, Keith, you're going to have to go to Germany and Udo will give you a dram. Uh, uh, Keith, whenever you're here in Germany, you will definitely get a dram. There's absolutely no doubt of it. And, and you will, you will experience one of, uh, probably the most exclusive uh, drums you you have in, in Europe as well, uh, as you can get. So this one is for you, uh, Keith. Get in touch with me and I'll give you a sample. Uh-oh, he says that's a deal. So um, one thing I wanted to point out is, you know, a couple of people, well, someone said here that the um, Andrew Symington at Signatory is a great picker. And I agree, I agree completely. And I'll tell you something. Some people, if, if you post in our Facebook page, your name just comes up on here as Facebook user. You, it doesn't give your name. So if you post through our group, it gives your name. It's a Facebook rule. It has nothing to do with us. But um, I will tell you that we are doing this film in independent bodily. And one of the few people we've not been able to get an interview with is Andrew Symington. They've, they've said yes, and we just haven't been able to get it scheduled. We've tried and tried. We really would like to talk to him. So if someone here knows him... <laughs> uh we would uh um we would like to get we definitely do something with with them as well it, it's it, you know it's it'd be a shame not to include them because signatory is a great independent bottler although although i did have to say i did discover that early on that independent bottling is a much bigger world than i realized because there's independent bottlers all over the world bottling scotch and selling them in Holland, in Germany, in Japan, in the US, you know, all over the world. There's, there's different countries and they only do those, they only distribute to those countries. Um, so uh, Keith said he will trade a sample of Octomore barbecue sauce with you, Udo, for a sample of <laughs> the, uh, the water of life sheep island, as we call it. Um, I call it sheep island. Uh, so I think that we should uh, try to do this again next week. Um, I have a couple of guests who have agreed to appear. I just haven't been able to schedule them because I was in Europe for three weeks. Udo has been driving me around to making me live in castles and drink whiskey all the time. <laughs> well, I would say you have deserved it. <laughs> um, the uh, I'm, Someone... Um, who just comes up as Facebook user here. So I don't know who it is. I'm sorry, wrote uh, here. Um, Water of Life on PBS. Can we expect a crossover with Greg and possibly the guy from Reading Rainbow, Russell Fawcett? Um, I'm going to assume that that's going to be a Mark Pruitt comment. Uh, I'm going to go out on a limb and guess. <laughs> uh, Thompson Brothers, yes, in Dornuck, amazing. Um, really, really unique stuff. Really, really unique whiskey they're making on their own as well. Um, Yes, VNM in Italy. Yeah, I mean, there's just so many. Uh, one of the guys on our team went on vacation before the pandemic uh, in Japan, and he came back with eight bottles of whiskey. None of them were Japanese whiskey. They were all independent bottlings of Scotch whiskey <laughs> from Japan only. So I, that's why I think it's an interesting subject. Uh, it, 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 I, I cannot find a, an equivalent anywhere else in the world to independent bottling of different foods or you know there's no wine equivalent or fruits or vegetables or fish or any you know there's just there's nothing else quite like it um so yeah uh here christopher malloy this is an interesting comment christopher i'm going to share this um yes i saw that ralphie who was featured in our film yeah he me recently made a video showing how difficult it is to turn a profit on a single cask of whiskey due to the punishing taxes um Independent bottlers, I wouldn't want to be one starting out right now because of the 
the costs of getting casks, the costs of warehousing are going through the roof. The duties aren't going anywhere. The tax percentage, even if they don't go up, the prices are going up. So that drives them up as well. Um, it's, it's a tricky world. And I think the ones who have been doing it for 100 plus years are the ones doing it, uh, having the easiest time. Um, you know, we've done some releases as a film, but we've done them in tandem with independent bottlers where they're doing the logistics behind the scenes. You know, uh, we're just really the the mouthpiece of it, you know, and we've, we've chosen whiskeys with them. You know, we've, they've made some suggestions based on the sort of creative story of the film and how it fits. You know, um, one of the things that we really were interested in is about creative use of wood and, and vatting and different, you know, techniques of making interesting whiskeys. And that's why the whiskeys we've done with single cask and with the single cask nation have all been chosen for different reasons. The first one was Jim McEwen era Brooklady. The next two were basically chosen based on the techniques used to make the whiskey. Um, so that's all we have to do. That's the fun part. That's mostly this part. <laughs> uh, well, I guess we should wrap this up. Um, thanks. I, I, this is really great because we've had a lot of people watching us this whole time, and I, I really appreciate your time. And I really appreciate your comments and thoughts and support. And if you have any comments or want to write anything to us in the Facebook group, we'll get back to you with messages. We want everyone to see the film. It's on PBS. It's on the, and it's going to be all over the country. Um, and uh, Compass Box will be featured in our film, Christopher. Yes. Um, um, and uh, we're, you know we've already got that in the works. So. Believe it or not, there's only a few more interviews we have to do before we're ready to start putting that all together. And big parts of it are together already. So um, uh, it's 1.30 here. I mean, my productivity is pretty much shot for the day. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was great chatting with you, Udo. Thanks for your time. Thanks for having me in your show. Ah, it's always fun. Um We'll, uh, let's, let's do this again soon when we have some other surprises we're working on. So we'll tell you more about that later. Yeah, we have quite an interesting project in the, uh, in the future. And it's really big fun working with you together. There was a, there was a pleasure that week that we spent together. Let's, let's do it next time on Isla. <laughs> okay, that's the deal. So let's go for it. <laughs> Cheers. Bye, everyone.